I recently came across an awesome tool called Ansible Semaphore, a beautiful web interface for running Ansible playbooks. And I thought to myself, this would be the perfect way to deploy and manage Cube spray based Kubernetes clusters. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I build and maintain several Kubernetes clusters, and I am a huge fan of Cube spray, which is a Kubernetes setup project that uses Ansible to set up production ready clusters. So, in this video, we're going to install Semaphore and use it to deploy, upgrade, and scale a Kubernetes cluster and see how to do all sorts of other Kubernetes management tasks, all within a beautiful and simple web interface. So before we get started, I encourage you all who may not be familiar with Semaphore to check out the website and the GitHub repo to look at all the awesome features. I will have all of that information linked in the description below. There's a lot you can do with Semaphore. It has support for LDAP integration for more advanced user management. It supports alerts, notifications, CICD pipelines, and much more. It also has an API so you can integrate Semaphore into your existing automation tools. So let us go ahead and install Ansible Semaphore. Now, if you look at the official documentation, you'll see there are several ways in which you can get Semaphore running on your system. You can use Snap or your Linux distros package manager. You can also download and directly run the Semaphore binary. And of course, my personal favorite, you can use the Docker image, which can run Semaphore inside of a container. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Kubespray uses Ansible to deploy Kubernetes. But one thing to keep in mind is that Kubespray is usually very particular about the Ansible and Python versions it likes to use. And this can vary between each Kubespray release. So it is unlikely that the default Ansible version bundled in the official Docker image will work with the Kubespray playbooks. Kubespray also defines several other Python dependencies in a requirements file that must be installed for the playbooks to run successfully. You can easily do this directly on a Linux server. There is in-depth documentation on how to manually set up Semaphore and you can set up your own custom Python environment and install a specific Ansible version that you choose. But if you'd like to use Docker, you can build your own custom Docker image and I'm going to walk you through exactly how I built my own custom Semaphore image that is compatible with Kubespray. Now, before we get started, let's take a quick look Look at the environment we are going to be working with today. I have freshly installed five Linux VMs, one which will act as our deployment server where we will run Semaphore. The other four servers will act as our Kubernetes cluster nodes. So the first thing we shall do is SSH into the deployment server and install Docker which is pretty much the only prerequisite we will need on this server. We can create our project directory and start building out our project files. The first file we'll create, of course, is a Docker file where we'll define the instructions on how to build our custom Semaphore Kubespray image. So when you take a look at the Docker file here, we start with the best image of Python version 3.10. Uh, it's also going to be based on Debian Bullseye. This will serve as the foundation for our container. Next, we define some default environment variables. These include database connection details, admin credentials, and the encryption keys specific to Semaphore. We will see shortly how these variables are used to generate the Semaphore configuration file and how we can also override them at startup. Moving forward, we install essential packages like git, wget, and get text required for the next steps. We then clone the Kubespray repository to install Ansible and other Python dependencies listed in the requirements file. Next, we download and install Semaphore. Then we copy over the config template file and the entry point script. We'll take a closer look at the contents of both of these files in a bit. And then we can do some cleanup to reduce the image size, removing the temporary files and directories. Finally, we define the container's entry point, which is a script that will execute when the container starts up. The second file we'll create is the config template file. This is a standard semaphore configuration file with some configuration options replaced with environment variables. So when the container is starting up, env subst will use this template as an input and substitute the environment variables with the actual values of the variables and generate the final config file. And we can see exactly how that will be done when we take a look at the entry point script. 
So you can see here the first command in the entry point script is the env subst command that generates the final config file. Then next I've written an if statement which simply checks the database for the existence of an admin user. If one is found it sets its credentials based on the environment variables you set before starting semaphore. If the admin user is not already created it will create it also with the credentials you specify. You can obviously further customize the config template file and entry point script to your liking. As I'm sure you've already noted, there are many more semaphore configuration options I have not included here. I'm simply setting the minimum configuration required for kubespray to function. I'll have all the code linked down in the description, so please feel free to modify the files as you see fit. And finally, we need to create a docker compose file to build and run our image. So in this docker compose file, I'll create two services. First, the semaphore kubespray service. I will set the build context for it, the path where it will find the docker file. Set an image tag and container name, and then under environment, I can set the variables that I wish to override at startup. The values you set here will be used in the semaphore configuration. Now, because semaphore needs a database to function, I will set a depends on section, which simply makes the semaphore kubespray service wait for the MySQL service to report a healthy status before starting. And below we can see the MySQL service also defined. The MySQL container will create a default database called Semaphore with these credentials. It also performs a health check on itself, which is how Semaphore Kubespray knows if the MySQL database is ready. And then finally, we define the MySQL volume to persist the database data. So now with all of the necessary files set, we should be able to build and run Semaphore Kubespray. And we can simply do that with the build and up commands. We can also do a quick docker ps to verify that the containers are running fine. Then we can log into the web interface using the IP address of the deployment server on port 3000. Of course, if you're setting this up on your local machine, you can use localhost 3000 to connect. So the first thing it asks us to do after login is to create a new project. So you can take a look around at the web interface and explore the different options. And I'm sure if you've used Ansible before, all of these tabs will make much sense to you. If not, it is quite simple and I'm going to walk you through how you can use all of these using Kubespray playbooks. So before we can do that, let us do a quick recap on how Kubespray works. Like we have already established, Kubespray is a set of Ansible playbooks and roles designed to deploy a production-ready Kubernetes cluster. Alongside these roles and playbooks are several configuration and variable files that you can customize to suit your specific needs. In these files, you can define the characteristics of your cluster, including the nodes or network settings and other Kubernetes components. An inventory file, usually named host.yaml, is where the definition of all your Ansible hosts lives. Here you can control which hosts are part of your Kubernetes cluster. Different packages and settings will be installed and configured on different nodes depending on if you have set them as control plane nodes, or etcd nodes, or simple worker nodes. And then finally we have the playbooks themselves which perform specific tasks like deploying a new cluster, upgrading the cluster, adding or removing nodes from the cluster and much more. But let us combine all of this information into our Kubernetes deployment project in Semaphore. The first thing we need to do is create access keys. These are keys that will be used to connect to Ansible playbook repositories or Ansible hosts. We can navigate over to key store and click new key. First, we create a key of type none, which is used for HTTPS repositories and for playbooks which use none SSH connections. Then we need to create an SSH key that will be used by Ansible to connect to the hosts in the inventory. We can do that by generating a key pair on our deployment server by running the SSH keygen command. So once the keys have been generated, paste the contents of the public key in the authorized keys file on all the other Linux VMs that we wish to configure with Ansible. Once this has been done, we can now paste the contents of the private key into a new SSH key in the web interface. We can name it semaphore and set its username to root. This can be different depending on how you generated your keys, so set the username accordingly. Next, we can create the kubespray repository. Set the URL of the repo, the branch, and the non-access key since we are connecting to an HTTPS repository. And then under inventory, we can create a new inventory called kubedev 
for the kubedev cluster that we are about to deploy. Set the credentials to the SSH key we just created and set the type to static YAML. And then here we can paste the content of our hosts file. I've included an example host.yaml file which you can use as a guide to create your own inventory. Next, we set some cluster configuration options in environment. Here we define some variables which set the cluster name and case version in JSON format. Then finally, we can create the task templates that will help us deploy and manage our Kubernetes cluster. So under task templates, we create a new template called deploy Kubernetes. We set the playbook name to cluster.yaml. If you take a look at the kubespray git repo, you can see all the playbooks used for various tasks including the cluster.yaml playbook, which is used for creating new k clusters. We then set the inventory to kubedev, set the kubespray repository which is the source of our playbooks and the environment for our custom cluster configuration. You can set allow CLI args which enables you to supply some extra arguments at runtime. And now we are ready to go, we can click on run to go ahead and deploy a new Kubernetes cluster. We get this nice preview window of the output of the Ansible playbook command. We can close and open this window up at any time to check on the progress of the deployment. Same of who will keep working in the background, so we can easily use it to deploy multiple inventories at the same time. So while our cluster is deploying, we can go ahead and create our other task templates. We can create an upgrade Kubernetes task template with the same options, only this time with the upgrade cluster playbook. We do the same with the scale cluster task template, which uses the scale.yaml playbook. And then we can do one more using the remove node.yaml playbook. The remove node.yaml playbook includes a confirmation dialog. So we set the skip confirmation CLI argument for this task template. With our task templates created, we can check on the progress of our Kubernetes deployment task. So once completed, we can see the output of the task and confirm that the task completed successfully. You will be able to see the status of all running and completed jobs on the dashboard and you can check the log output at any time. So since our Kubernetes deployment seems to have completed successfully, we can confirm by SSHing into the first node of our inventory. We can run kubectl get nodes which shows a healthy three node cluster. kubectl get pods also shows all the control plane nodes running fine. We can also upgrade our cluster configuration with the upgrade task. And for this, we can update our environment with some new values. So in this example, we're installing some add-ons like a registry, Nginx Ingress, and Metal LB. So you can always refer to the kubespray project for more configuration options. So we can update our environment and then run the upgrade task. Once completed, we can verify with the kubectl get pods on the cluster. And sure enough, we see that we have some new components added to the cluster. Let us also add a node to the cluster with a scale task. First, we update our inventory to include the information of the new node. Then we can run the task and set the limit CLI argument to limit the operations to just the node that is being added. And once completed, we can run kubectl get nodes to show that we now have a four node cluster. Removing a node from the cluster is also simple enough. We can run the remove node task and specify the node we want removed with the node CLI argument. Once completed, we can verify that the node is indeed removed again with the kubectl get nodes. So you can see with Ansible Semaphore, it is extremely simple to deploy and manage multiple Kubernetes clusters all from a single web interface. You can create multiple projects for multiple clusters or create multiple task definitions within the same project for each cluster you manage. You are not limited to the task templates we created in this video. You can create many others depending on your specific needs. And plus, if you work within a team, you can have multiple users using the same web interface and can also assign different permissions to each user. Don't forget to check out the GitHub project in the description below with all the documentation, the code and the commands that we used in this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing for more. And I will see you in the next one.